Hello, welcome to the lecture number 27 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the last class, we were looking at the rotational Hamiltonian. Okay. The rotational Hamiltonian H rotation is given by L square by 2 mu R e square. No, I have used several you know R e is identically equal to R naught is odd equal to R. So, that is nothing but the length of the A B bond equilibrium length. Okay. So, that is R naught or R e okay. and this is rigid that means it is not changing. Okay. So, the bond of A B is fixed length. Okay. That is also okay. So, this gives you what is known as rigid rotor approximation. Okay. Now, if that is the case, this can slightly be written as r square by uh, sorry l square by 2 i e where i e is equal to mu r e square and this is called moment of inertia. Okay. And the operator l square is the total angular momentum operator. Okay. Now, this value will be equal to L square operator actually L square should be an operator. This will be equal to minus h bar square into 1 over sin theta d by d theta sin theta d by d theta plus 1 over sin square theta d square by d phi square where theta and phi are angular coordinates as part of spherical polar coordinates. Okay. Now, uh, there is also something called LZ operator that will be equal to Z component of the angular momentum. Now, it turns out that the uh, solutions of the angular momentum problem ok by the way one can imagine this as particle on a surface of a sphere or it can also be called as particle 
in a central force problem okay then what we have is the l square operator will have wave function y j m of theta and phi equals to h bar square j into j plus 1 y j m theta and phi and l z operator acting on y j m theta and phi will give you m h bar y j m theta and phi ok. Now using this one can write h rotation is equal to h rotation y j m theta and phi will be equal to now h rotation had 2 uh, 1 over 2 i as a additional uh, this is so if, if you go back h rotation was equal to l square by 2 i e so we already know the wave functions of this l square operator so only you multiply by this 2 i 1 over 2 i so that will be equal to h bar square by 2 i e j into j plus 1 y j m theta and phi. So now you can look at your so e rotation will now we depend on two quantum numbers j and m oh, ok that is equal to h bar square by 2 i e j into j plus 1 even though the wave function depends on m and j the energy depends only on j ok. So that is your e rotation this e rotation is all sometimes also written as e rotation j m is equal to h power square by 2 i e j into j plus 1 or equal to h times b e j into j plus 1 where b e is given by h by 8 pi square i e and this is called rotational constant. Okay. So now we know the wave functions and we know the uh, energies. Now let us go back to the transition moment integral. The transition moment integral is given by f mu f mu dot epsilon i ok. Now but your mu itself is written as mu is written as mu naught plus t mu by t r r is equal to 0 into r less 1 over 2 t square mu by t r square evaluated r naught sorry r naught into r square plus etc etc whole thing epsilon to i ok. Now if you take rigid rotor TMI if we have rigid rotor then of course the R naught R naught is a fixed value Okay. Therefore, the derivatives with respect to R will not exist. Therefore, for rigid rotor TMI for rigid rotor 
will be equal to f because this will go to 0 and this will also go to 0 all the other terms will go to 0 what you have is mu naught epsilon i okay where mu naught is called permanent dipole moment okay now your tmi is given by this so you have to have mu naught you have to have mu naught so under rigid rotor approximation for rigid rotor okay if tmi has to be non zero okay tmi that is equal to f mu naught epsilon i this has to be non zero then mu naught has to be non zero that is the initial if that is a minimum condition if mu naught becomes zero of course this entire integral becomes zero. So, the mu naught must be not equal to zero that means you can only have rotational transitions if mu naught is not equal to 0 that means the permanent dipole moment of molecules must be non zero to record rotational spectra okay so tmi equals to integral f mu naught dot epsilon so for recording rotational spectra the selection rule is the permanent dipole moment must be must not be zero so only mu naught is not equal to zero transitions will be allowed okay so for example if you have a a b diatomic molecule where a is not equal to b then this molecule will have permanent dipole moment mu naught is not equal to zero but if you have a homo diatomics like a a okay then of course mu is equal to zero mu naught is equal to zero so which means you cannot record recording of rotational spectra is not possible okay so one of the selection rules for the recording rotational spectra is that the transient moment integral will go to 0 when mu naught becomes 0. So, we can only record rotational spectra of molecules that are that have permanent dipole moment ok. Now, let us look at the TMI little more carefully. TMI equals to F mu naught. And one thing that you must remember that when I have this, that means if you take a molecule AB and your dipole moment is in this direction, let us suppose, okay. So, this is delta plus and delta minus, then the dipole moment will be in that direction. So, the propagation should be in this direction and the electric field should be so your e okay should be along the dipole moment okay that's a selection rule so this says that the electric field should oscillate along the 
because you are taking a dot product ok. Of course, you can come at an angle because you can always have a uh, you can always have the uh, projection along that axis. However, if you have A and B and if a direction of propagation is like this and your electric field is like this and your dipole moment is like this ok. So, dipole moment is along let us say x axis ok and the propagation of light is along x axis then your electric field will be along z axis let us assume. So, this is my z axis then of course, x dot z will be equal to 0 therefore, the transients will not take place ok. So, it is not only that you know uh, the mu naught must be 0, but the electric field must be uh, aligned along the, the permanent dipole moment to have the transients that is the this TMI ok. So, now once ok I assume that that becomes non-zero ok that means the molecule has dipole moment. So, two things one is molecule has has permanent dipole moment and 2 the electric field vector of the light has non-zero projection along the dipole moment ok. Only then the T transition moment integral can become non-zero. So, T m i will be equal to f mu naught dot epsilon dot. So, I am only looking at this part, this part needs two conditions one is the dipole moment must be non-zero or the permanent dipole moment must be non-zero and the electric field vector must be aligned or projected have a projection along the dipole moment ok. ok. If these two conditions are satisfied then we can look at the following the f and i ok. So, these are what are known as necessary conditions. So, these two are for recording the rotational spectrum ok. Necessary conditions without these conditions of course, one cannot record the rotational spectrum ok. Now, if you are now what we have now we have T m i is equal to f mu naught dot epsilon. So, we already taken care we have already taken care of this. Now, let us look at the wave functions. Now, your wave function i will be equal to now this will be the total wave function i. So, what will the total wave function i will consist of that will consist of electronic part psi e l and the nuclear part while I will call it as a kind nuclear. Okay. And similarly, uh, okay, there is a notation always uh, the ground state is given by double uh, double dash and the excited state is given by single dash. So, f is equal to psi electronic dot chi nuclear. Okay. Now, now the electronic is the this comes from the electronic arm. So, what is electronic H electronic psi electronic is E electronic psi electronic. So, this is the Hamiltonian that one needs to solve and this H electronic wave function will uh, elect, uh, H electronic uh, Hamilton will consist of ok uh, K E of electrons. P e of 
electrons and nuclei and P e of electrons repulsion either this is attraction and P e of nuclei this is repulsion ok. Now, so this uh, is the H electron if that you have to uh, use different techniques you have to do a quantum chemistry to solve that but, but in this course we will assume that we know that ok. Now, the chi nuclear will have so the chi nuclear will have two parts one is the what is what is known as phi nuclear or phi internal into phi um, internal into the other thing is the uh, translation ok. So, your I will now become psi electronic into phi internal into phi translation and your f will be equal to psi electronic phi internal phi translation ok. So, now let us light write the transition moment integral. So, your TMI will be equal to psi electronic phi translation and phi internal dash ok mu naught epsilon psi electronic phi trans and phi internal ok. Now, if you are looking at rigid rotor approximation ok let us think of a molecule a b separated by distance r naught or r e whatever ok sum of and then it is rotating ok. So, what will happen to electrons nothing will happen to ele the electronic part of the wave function remains unchanged. So, psi E L remains unchanged. So, which means psi E L double prime should be equal to psi E L single prime this is equal to psi E L. Now, if it is rotating and it is translating, so the rotation will not we will assume that rotation is not going to affect the translation rotational degrees of freedom and translational degrees of freedom can be separated out. So, then what happens is that phi trans prime will be equal to phi trans this is called phi trans ok. And when you have the electronic degrees of freedom frozen your dipole moment is not going to change ok. Similarly, when you have translation if the A B molecule is translating its dipole moment is not going to change. So, I can write rewrite my T M I as psi electronic ok. So, this is now 3 integrals is not it psi electronic phi trans phi internal mu naught epsilon psi electronic phi trans phi internal ok this is single prime and this is double prime. So, that is my. So, since the psi electronic and psi trans these two quantities are not going to depend on the this then I can bring them out that means I will have psi electronic phi trans and psi electronic phi trans ok then what I will have is the phi internal prime mu naught epsilon phi internal 
double prime. Okay. Now, if your electronic wave function and translation wave function are normalized, then this will go to 0 or oh, sorry, this will go to 1. Okay. Wave functions are, are normalized. Okay. Therefore, your TMI will become phi internal mu naught epsilon phi internal. Okay. So, for rotation the TMI will now become your phi internal is nothing but your rotational wave function. So, I will call it as a phi rotation in the excited state okay. and mu naught epsilon phi rotation in the ground state wave functions. Now, we know this will be nothing but if you take a rigid rotor approximation, the phi rotation will nothing but y j m j prime m prime theta and phi mu naught epsilon y j double prime m double prime theta and phi. So, that is going to be your TMI. Okay. Your transient moment integral can now be written in terms of spherical pole, uh, spherical harmonics. So, transition moment integral can be written in terms of y j m theta and phi which is nothing but your spherical. Okay, I am going to stop here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.